Okay, go ahead and pause the video here for a couple of minutes and uh, take a shot at this question. Okay, express each of the following numbers in scientific notation with correct significant figures. Okay, so scientific notation has two parts. So um, a number in scientific notation is always represented uh, as a number between 1 and 10. So what that means is I always have to move the decimal point in between the first two non-zero numbers. So let's look at this first one. Here's my decimal point. I'm going to move it right here, right in between those first two numbers between the 7 and the 1. So when I move the decimal point there, I'm going to write 7 point one one zero right all these numbers in here so in my um, scientific notation I should keep all of the numbers that are significant and when I look over here in my measurement seven one one point zero all of those numbers are significant because even though this zero comes at the end and it's a trailing zero since the uh, since there's a decimal point, that trailing zero becomes significant. Remember, it's whether or not there's a decimal point there that determines if a trailing zero is significant or not. Okay, so I have the first part here. I have the, um, the decimal part of my scientific notation. I've moved the decimal in between the first two numbers. I have a number between 1 and 10. It's 7.110. That's between 1 and 10. Now, I have to apply a multiplication factor uh, that corresponds to the distance by which I moved this decimal point. So I moved it over, if I count here, I moved it over one, two places. And I moved it over two places to the left. So I'm going to multiply this times 10 to the positive 2. And so this is how I would represent this number in scientific notation. So let's do the next one. I have to move the decimal point in between the first two non-zero numbers. So that's going to give me 2.39. In this case, I don't include that first zero because that's a leading zero, and it's not significant. So I would cancel out, I cross out any non-significant numbers. So I'll just I will ignore that first zero. But I can't ignore the fact that this number was 0.239, and the way that I uh, capture that information that this is a number smaller than 1 is my multiplication factor. Now that I'm moving the decimal to the right, it has to be a negative number. I moved it to the right one space, so it's negative 1. All right, let's do the next one. This is an ambiguous number that doesn't have a decimal point drawn, but I would assume that it's over here. So I'm going to move it one, two, three, four spots to the right. I'm going to write my number. Here, all of these digits are significant. This zero is an interior zero. It's in between two numbers that are significant, so it itself is significant. So all five of these digits are significant. 9.074. Three. I have to keep all of them. I've moved the decimal in between the first two numbers. I had to move it over one, two, three, four spots to the left. So times 10 to the positive 4. This next one, 1, 2. I have to move the decimal over two spots to the left. All of these numbers are significant. So this becomes 1.342 times 10 times 10 to the positive 2. All right, let's do the next one. I move this over 1, 2, 3, 4 spots. All of these zeros are significant. There's a decimal point here, and so these are trailing zeros that come after a decimal point. And if there's a decimal point, they're all significant. So this becomes 1.00000 times 10 to the 1, 2, 3, 1, 2, 3, 
I moved it four spots, so times 10 to the fourth. All right, let's try this one. All of these first zeros, these are all leading zeros, so those are all insignificant, so I can ignore all those. I move the decimal point one, two, three, four, five, six, seven places to the right, and this becomes seven. All of these are significant. Seven point three eight five nine two times ten. Forgot how many spaces I did. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven times ten to the negative seventh. So this is how I would represent all of these numbers in scientific notation. How many significant figures are contained in each of the following measurements? Go ahead and pause this one and give it a shot. Okay, 38.7 grams. This one is easy, there are no zeros. So I'm going to underline all the significant figures. There are three. If there are no zeros, all the numbers are significant. Because remember, a number that's not zero is always significant. Here, the only number that I'm, this, this part over here is a multiplication factor, and this part over here is a unit. So those don't factor into how many significant figures I have. The only part of the measurement uh, that has significant figures is this part over here, and there's only one number over there. So this one just has one significant figure. Here's my next one on C. Um, these two zeros here are uh, interior zeros, or captive zeros. They are in between two numbers that are significant, so they themselves are significant. So they're all significant. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven significant figures. Let's look at this one. Again, this is my uh, uh, multiplication factor. And this is my unit, so those don't factor in. This is a leading zero after a decimal, so it does count. So those are all significant. One, two, three, four, five, six. And here, um, a leading zero after, or excuse me, a trailing zero after a decimal. So those, all three of those are significant. And here I have two leading zeros that don't count. Those are insignificant. And here, those zeros do count because they come after a decimal and after a non-zero number. So here I would have four significant figures. All right, go ahead and pause the video for a minute here and give this one a shot. All right, I'm going to bring my calculator over here. I'll bring my calculator over here. Bring it to a place where you guys can see it. Here we go. OK, 62.8. 62.8 times 34. So the answer is 2,000. Oh, that didn't work. So the answer is 2135.2. ,2. But I'm not allowed to keep all of those digits. So according to the rules of significant figures, I can only keep the fewest number of significant figures among the numbers that I had multiplied. So this has three sig figs, and this number has two sig figs. So I can only keep two sig figs. I have to keep the lower of those two numbers. So I'd keep these two, and that means my number would become, I, um, the, this number directly after the one is a three, so I'll write it down. So this is going to become 2, 1, 0, 0, point zero. Two, 
two, one, zero, zero. And the reason is because um, if I'm only allowed to keep two significant figures, uh, now my number has two. If I add a decimal point here um, and add another zero, now suddenly my number, my value has five significant figures. And I'm not allowed to have five significant figures. I'm only allowed to have two. So if I can only have these two, then I have to keep the decimal point off and keep that last zero off. Then 2100 zero, zero only has two significant figures. All right, let's try this next one. 0 0.147 plus 0 0.0066 plus 0 0.012. So my number is 0 0.1656. So the rules of addition and subtraction say I can only have in my answer the, the number of decimal places uh, of the fewest number of those that I added together. So let's look here. I have three numbers after the decimal. I have four numbers after the decimal. I have three numbers after the decimal. So that means I'm allowed to keep three numbers after the decimal. So I look at this number, and it's a six, so I'll round up. So this becomes 0 0.166. All right, let's try this next one. 38 times 95 times 1.792. I get 6. Four six nine point one two. Um, so let's look here. I have two sig figs, two sig figs, four sig figs. So remember, the rules for multiplication and division are different than the rules for addition and subtraction. So here in multiplication and division, I'm just looking for the number of sig figs. This one has two. Two is my lowest, so I'm going to keep these two. My 6 is bigger than 5, so I'm going to round up. So this is going to become 6, 5. And if I'm only allowed to have 2, then I have to drop everything else and even drop the decimal point. Because now I'll only have two numbers in there. 6, 5, 0, 0. All right, let's try this next one. 15 minus 0 0.15 minus point six one five five fourteen point two three four five now these are the rules for addition and subtraction so i don't care about the number of sig figs i care about the number of decimal places this number right here has zero decimal places it doesn't have a decimal point so that means that this number right here can't have a decimal point either so I'm only allowed to keep these first two numbers. This 2 means I would round down. So this is just going to become 14. All right, let's try this next one. 8.78 times 0 0.05000. Why does this have two decimal points in it? Okay, this is not a real number. <laughs> Can't have two decimal points in a number. Oh, uh, where's clear? So we'll skip this one. All right, let's try this last one. One, four, zero, plus seven point six eight plus point zero one four. One four seven point six nine four. So here's addition and subtraction. I'm only allowed to keep my number can only have as many decimal places as the number with the fewest over here on the left. This number has zero decimal places. So that means I'm not allowed to have any decimal places over here. I can only keep these first three numbers. The six tells me to round up. So this would become one four eight.